Hope is such an integral part of Traffic 911. When a child chooses to celebrate her goal, we get to journey alongside and celebrate with them. When a child gets to make a new goal, that's hope being translated in themselves. They see hope in themselves and we get to champion alongside them. And when they succeed, we succeed. When they grieve, we grieve. We are in an entire community tied together to each and every single one of these children. And when they achieve a goal, we achieve a goal. Hope is contagious. Hope has just been the center of everything that we do here at Traffic 911. Almost all of these survivors have dealt with trauma that many of us here in this room would never begin to comprehend. That trauma has caused them to just completely shut out the world and the fact that our advocates play a role in seeing that journey of a child change and it's the hope that we have that the work that we're doing is changing the lives of these kids. When we talk about hope, we're usually dealing with drops in the bucket that help us to get through the hard days. So we have this reservoir of hope that we can pull from when things get really hard. So on days when we get calls from our, from our youth telling us that they are considering taking their lives, we're able to draw from this reservoir of hope. Um, we're able to draw from this fuel that is catapulting us into deeper relationship. We are only able to show up for these youth because we have hope. Hope as an advocate means literally waking up at night at random hours and answering a phone call to just listen to someone vent about an argument with their mom because that was really bad. I currently have a client who is suicidal and she does, she's does. she been suicidal for about two months and that means coming in every Monday and getting a phone call to go to a hospital. And hope in her means just Having the resiliency to be alive and like hope is a light that you can't even explain or see in others with our youth. Hope is just walking with them alongside and like when they can't carry it, you carry it for them. You don't say anything, you just smile and just keep on going and walking with them. Hope sometimes looks like meeting practical needs. And it also looks like connecting these kids to community partners who also want to ignite hope in them. This kid came into services when he was 15 years old. I could see that this young man was walking around a high school and he hadn't had his hair cut in a long time. And so for our visit, I decided that I would offer to take him to the barbershop. We walk in and I can see his face light up immediately. She starts cutting his hair. And when she asks him, what would you like? He doesn't have an answer. And he communicates, I I've I don't know. People just cut my hair like I, I don't know what I like. Our barber took this moment to feel hope. So he gets his hair done, he gets twists, and he looks in the mirror, and I can see all over his face. He is like, I am that guy. Like you can just see it all over him, hope restored in a place where now he knows this is what I like. And when I say what I like, when I use my voice, people are gonna listen and they're gonna help me get my need met. Everyone has a vital role in this movement. Everyone has a role for freedom and for hope. I don't work on the front lines. I don't respond in crisis, but I have a place in this movement. And my place is rallying people around our advocates and our team that are responding, that are doing the long haul work. If you look at our program, the last piece of long-term empowerment we call community reintegration. And it essentially is our hope that the kids that we serve and that we know and we walk alongside in this long journey find a community that welcomes them with open arms. They also have a chance at hope. They have a chance at community and they have a chance at long-term healing. Thank you.